On June 6, 1992, a Copa Airlines Boeing 737 to 204 advanced operated a scheduled flight CMP 201 on the Panamacali route. There were 47 people on board the ship, 40 passengers, and 7 crew members. The Boeing 737 to 204 operated a regular passenger flight CMP 201. In Panama, 10 tons of jet fuel were poured into its tanks and at 20.36 p.m. Eastern Standard Time the liner took off from the runway number 21L of Panama's Tocumen Airport. According to the plan, the flight to Cali on the first segment was to be carried out along the 149 degrees vector, but at 20.37 hours the crew contacted the Panama ATC Center for the first time and requested a course of 120 degrees to bypass the Gulf of Panama, where at that time there was bad weather. After this request, the crew made another request, but this time to heading 90 degrees, which the controller allowed. Also, according to the plan, the flight was supposed to take place at flight level FL270, 27,066 feet, but this flight level was not available at that time, since another aircraft followed it in a southeasterly direction. Therefore, the dispatcher gave permission to take FL250. At 2045, nine minutes after takeoff, the crew asked the controller for permission to occupy the air corridor A321, which the controller allowed. Then the crew asked the controller for additional information about the weather conditions on the flight route. The controller reported that the radar at 29 to 49 miles from the airport observed solid clouds, and from 49 to 59 miles from the airport there are already clearings. The controller also warned that due to the capabilities of the radar, he could not determine the weather further than 59 miles from the airport. At 2048, the crew reported that they had taken flight level FL-250. This was the last recorded communication with flight CMP-201. Subsequently, airline employees identified by voice that the radio communications were carried out by the captain, on the basis of which, taking into account the practice common in the company, the co-pilot was in control of the aircraft. At 2057 hours, flight tag CMP-201 suddenly disappeared from the radar screen. The controller tried to contact the aircraft, but there was no answer. Then the dispatcher asked the crew of the Aero airplane for help, but they could not contact the missing plane either. Then the Panamanian air traffic controllers contacted their Colombian counterparts, who controlled the airspace in northern Colombia, and asked them to try to contact Flight 201. When the Colombian air traffic controllers could not establish contact with the missing airliner, search operations were launched. The next morning, 99 miles northeast of Panama, in the province of Darien, the wreckage of the missing flight CMP-201 was discovered. According to the testimony of eyewitnesses who were not far from the crash site, at that time it was a clear night with no signs of rain or thunderstorms. Then, at 2100 hours Eastern Standard Time, burning debris fell from the sky, with no sound heard. All. 47 people on board the plane were killed. After both flight recorders of the aircraft were found, the records on which were practically not affected. However, the voice recorder could not help in the investigation, as its microphone was broken, and therefore the last recording was made nine days before the disaster. According to the parametric recorder, the flight proceeded normally until 95 seconds before the end of the recording, the liner, without changing course, began to slowly enter the left roll. This continued for 70 seconds and 25 seconds before the end of the recording, when the left bank was 35 degrees, the aircraft began to quickly enter the right bank, his nose at the same time dropped down by 15 degrees. Recording ceased at 1.87 miles as Flight 201, in a right bank of 63 degrees, was flying on a heading of 356 degrees at 559 miles per hour. After that, the plane, due to prohibitive overloads, collapsed in the air.
An analysis of the position of the controls and injuries with wounds on the bodies of the pilots testified that the pilots during the development of the emergency tried to regain control of the aircraft for at least 10 seconds. Toxicological examination of their bodies showed negative results. There were also no signs of a heart attack or heart attack in the crew members. An examination of the passengers' tissues found no signs of carbon monoxide poisoning. Among the reasons why the plane went into a steep roll, a dozen options were considered, of which four main versions of the disaster were identified. Sabotage. Explosive decompression. Difficult weather conditions. Failure of the artificial horizon. After analyzing these versions, the commission rejected the first three of them. As a result, the commission came to the conclusion that the cause of the crash of flight CMP-201 was a malfunction in the artificial horizon caused by a short circuit and the subsequent failure of the vertical gyroscope. The flight was carried out at night at cruising altitude, because of which the crew could not see the natural horizon, and therefore were guided only by the indications of the attitude indicator until they lost control of the aircraft. Cross-checking of indications of the main and reserve artificial horizons was not carried out. The disaster was also facilitated by the fact that the airline's fleet was not standardized, as Copa Airlines purchased liners from other airlines, Britannia Airways, the crashed plane, Lufthansa, Air New Zealand, Gulf Air, Malaysian Airlines System, MAS, and Thai Airways International. As a result, the pilots, taking the next plane, first of all, determined the location of the toggle switches. Also, in the training of flight crews conducted by the airline, insufficient attention was paid to the issue of interaction between pilots in the cockpit.